Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so next uh, roll call. Uh, Stephen Calloway. Present. Uh, Marion Colby. Present. Gail Berenger. Here. And Rich Lasalas. Here. And I'm here. So, uh, since this is our first um, our first public hearing, I thought it would be a good idea to to explain what our role is, uh, what what we do here. Uh, the Heritage Commission was established in the Mar in March of 2018 by a warrant article. Our role is to review demolition permits for buildings constructed prior to 1960 and determine whether the building is architecturally, historically, or culturally significant. If the subject building is considered to be significant, our role is to explore alternatives to demolition and hold a hearing uh, for public input, which is why we're here tonight. Out of all the permits uh, we've reviewed over the last few years, this is the first one that has actually um, been considered significant enough uh, for us to hold the hearing. Uh, but it's important to understand that our role is simply advisory and no decisions that we make are uh, binding in any way and what ultimately happens to the property is at the discretion of the owner, the property owner. And I'm expecting at the end of the meeting a motion will be made with a recommendation from, uh, from us to move forward depending on um, you know, what we hear and, and, uh, and what's discussed. So um, next up, if uh, we have... Um, We'd like it to give a brief history of the property, if you have that. Sure. <clears throat> the name Bixby and its association with our town predates the incorporation of Litchfield in 1734 by some 50 years. Captain William Bixby's great-grandfather served as the proprietor's clerk for Brenton's farm as early as 1680. The Bixby House at 152 Charles Bancroft Highway was built in 1794 by Captain William Bixby and his wife, Sarah Thompson. Captain Bixby served in the Revolutionary War. In business, he was engaged in farming, and for a portion of each year, he transported lumber through the Merrimack Canal between points near his residence and Lowell, Massachusetts. The timber industry allowed Captain Bixby to flourish and to afford to build a fine new home. The last Bixby to live in the house was Captain Bixby's granddaughter, Sela Bixby. She endowed several trust funds in our town. She died in 1944. Before her death, she sold the house and the farm to Leon and Dorothy Callawa of Nashua. The Callawas later sold the property to Howard and Helen Parker of Lowell, Massachusetts. In 1974, the Parkers sold the property to the Wilson Farms of Lexington, Massachusetts. The house and farm buildings have always been regarded as some of the finest in the town, having in exceptional interior woodwork and a fireplace in every room. So in discussing uh, how we would move forward, uh, we tossed around a few ideas of what could become of the property as an alternative to uh, demolition. One thought we had was to see if they'd be willing, if the owners would be willing to subdivide that property with the house on it, you know, make a new lot. Um, another alternative, of course, is to find a place to relocate it. Um, was there anything else that, uh, those are the two things, but was there any other ideas that we had about? We had a different one. Do we have one other idea of what we could do with it? Well, it was to subdivide that house, to move the house, or to uh, allow the Wilson farm to continue to own it where it is, but allow the town to use it in some way. Yeah, OK. So um, we wanted to give the um, property owner an opportunity to to uh, address the the public and speak and they um, instead of doing that they uh, they had their attorney send us a letter and uh, um, he also said he wasn't going to be here so I have the letter I'm going to read not the entire thing but the but the main points 
Uh, the name of the company that owns the property is Will2 LLC. So Will2 LLC intends to demolish the house as soon as possible. Will2 LLC, Wilson Farm, and the Wilson family will not be spending good money after bad for such options as repairing the house, turning it into a museum, or subdividing the house from the larger tract. Number two, Will2 LLC will provide access to the Heritage Commission to take pictures and video prior to demolition. Please reach out to Keith Marshall. Number three, Will2 LLC is willing to sell the house to the town for one dollar to allow the town to move the house off-site, provided A, we promptly come to, agreement, to an agreement with the town to remove the house by March 15, 2023. B, moving the house will be at no cost to Will2 LLC. C, the, the town will indemnify and hold Will2 LLC harmless from anything having to do with moving the house. And D, subject to our coming to a formal written agreement between the parties. And it goes on to say that they're, um, the excavation company is ready for demolition. So having said that, um, is there, does anybody want to make any statements for public input? I did a little bit of uh, research on my own as far as that. And uh, the one of the problems with subdividing the house from the farm is the um, the fact that that barn is very close to the house right there's you could not i mean oh, it's yeah. like right 30 feet or maybe not four. even that yeah is it less than that i think so if it was further apart then possibly uh it could be subdivided uh, my thought is that you know such a gem you know if there was a way of saving it we we need to do our due diligence to do everything we can to, to save it. Uh, I did call Andy Perlman. I've known Andy for many years. And he says, you know, Wilson's has no thought at all of saving that, you know, that they feel that it would become a tremendous expense for them to do anything with it. Uh, I did call another person here in town that has experience in moving houses, and he said that it would be a huge expense to try to move that house. And so um, uh, at this point, I mean, uh, the only other thing that I can think of is to try to preserve, as you said, Dr. Callawa, there's some nice woodwork in there. I mean, is there any value to what's in there to try to to save that, you know, uh, an architectural millwork company or something? I mean, I watch the pickers on TV all the time, and they like these, you know. Well, if a, a house is, you know, uh, 200 years old plus, you know, there's obviously some, some things in there that could maybe be valuable. Yes, uh, there. I know of two companies in the state of New Hampshire who will come in and uh, completely take a house down to its bones. And even further, they'll take uh, the chestnut beams probably and everything else as the house is demolished. Mm -hmm. uh, And that certainly could be done and probably would be worth doing if the house cannot be saved. Um, I'm not sure whether we should um, let the selectmen know that they are willing to sell it to the town for a dollar because the town does own land that it could be moved to. And we did go through this with the Dark Hall Ranch Farm, uh, which was to be demolished. and. Um, the Conservation Commission and the town were willing to move that down onto town property until you, you the, the house or the barn? The house. The house, okay. Until the uh, developer said, no, no, we'll save the house. Uh, can't save the barn, but we'll save the house. And so that was a little victory there. I think we should absolutely bring it up and see what they think. You think so too? Yeah. Yes. 
that the Conservation Commission. Yeah. yeah. But I think it'd be a tough, tough to convince, and and we have a timeline here, right. because they're saying they're going to demolish it. You know, well, they they want an answer by the. Thirtieth, I think it says here. I think yeah, that 30th. if the town were serious about moving it and getting that done, uh, that there would probably be some flexibility in the town in the timeline. But they sort uh, they don't want to fool around with this forever. Right. Yeah, I think they want an answer by the thirtieth and move by March fifteenth. Right by March fifteenth. But it it would, I mean, to convince the people to spend. I'm saying a minimum hundred thousand dollars to move that house uh, very far at all to spend a hundred thousand dollars and then have to you know rehabilitate, rehabilitate the house oh yeah no I know all of that yeah I mean it's a, a I, it's I, a huge expense yeah. yeah and I can't see the townspeople going for that. <coughs> You know? Well, it's it's a long shot at best. Right. So yeah, but I mean, we I think that's part of what we need to do yeah. is is raise awareness. This off this this offer's been made to us. If the answer's no, the answer's no. But we can't just you know not even try. And the timeline. I mean, nothing in that letter explicitly prohibits us going in and when I say us, the town. Heritage Commission going in and trying to salvage, you know. Well, we well, don't I think know would, if they are having discussed. a salvage company, though. Oh, okay. They may we be doing it themselves. We don't know. I, I think that some stuff has been done in the house. It appears that way, anyway, from the outside. That there were at least two cars p parked there this afternoon. Well, there were always are. Those there are people it, just along. using it as a parking space. They're in the barn working. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I think that it's excellent that um, we've uh, addressed this issue uh, in view of the bylaws of the Heritage Commission. And if nothing else, having grown up in Litchfield, as you know, Rich um, and Marion and Stephen, uh, I, I would <laughs> hate to see Century Farm taken down, but uh, it is the right of the owner to make their decisions. And we're letting people know that we value these old homes. And if, as I said, if nothing else, uh, an awareness has been created. Marion's post on Litchfield What's Up uh, brought a lot of uh, comments, a lot of attention to the issue. Uh, so I think that's a good thing. Yeah, it's a beautiful home, you know. It is. It's yes. one of the finest. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it was fixed up, I mean, and on a decent lot, I mean, here in Litchfield, that would be worth six, seven hundred thousand or more. Mm -hmm. You know, but spend a million for a six hundred thousand dollar house. You know, uh, and that's kind of a hard. You know, for sure, it's hard to convince people that that's a good idea. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if it was just the fact that we could move it maybe a hundred feet onto a, a separate plot of land right. and and you know, put a new foundation under it, and away we go. That'd be one thing, but right. no, it's burned. Right, it has to be restored as well, right. Um, but I think it uh, behooves us, uh, as the commission, to meet with the selectmen and probably also invite the Conservation Commission to be there um, to present to you what the attorney for the Wilson Farm um, has suggested. We can certainly do that. We have a meeting tomorrow night. Uh, so maybe I, short of short notice getting conservation commission and selectmen together yeah well I mean we could make the presentation at least if they're not available the uh, the timeline is what yeah, you know, right. Right. exactly yeah. exactly yeah. even for salvage now if they're if they're doing salvages I didn't think to ask Andy you know whether they were doing that themselves, but uh, um, I think one of the comments on Facebook indicated that they were already in the house doing some work. Okay. Well, you don't know what that means, yeah, so right, you know. Right. But I know, like in my house, which is a little bit older than that house, 
But there's pine floorboards that are this wide. Oh, yeah. I've got a few in my house, too. I mean, just that, you know, the old, uh, the old mantle. I mean, we have a uh, Dutch oven, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff that could be salvaged, but, uh, and I'm sure this house has the same thing. Now, whether it's been damaged or not, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm sure there's at least something. But if, if the town salvaged it, where would we store it, you know? Right. Uh, the That's town could maybe help them out with salvage. Um, I'm not sure that they would give those things to us. I just don't know that. We don't know. We, this is all something that we need to discuss. Um, yeah. And maybe come up with some sort of a answer to that letter, saying right. what you know what we would like to do and what we would like permission to do. So. Okay. Yeah, I, I I think salvage is really about the only thing we have left to us, you know, as far as I can see. I, maybe I missed something, but I don't think, you know, rehabbing it in its present location, that's not in the cards. Right, right. Uh, moving it, I, I would... Next to impossible, really. Yes, and, and certainly not a moneymaker. Uh, but if they were, I mean, if they'll sell it to the town for a dollar and give us a month to, to have somebody come in and strip it, you know, before they knock it down, at least we've salvaged something. You know? right. <clears throat> Would the historical society be interested in anything in that house? Uh, actually, the well, it's not the historical society, but I happen to own a fair amount of the original furniture from the house. Oh, okay. Um, from the time that my grandmother and grandfather owned it. Okay. Um, but there probably are things in there that we would have an interest in. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and certainly, you know, it would be nice to be, if it cannot be saved, to salvage as much as we can to use in another house somewhere. Right. As people are restoring, they're always looking for these 18th century mm -hmm. floorboards and mantles and woodwork and so forth. So, Stephen, did I hear you say that uh, your dad, Jimmy, was conceived in what, a bed that you have for, from there? Uh, no, you didn't hear me say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's something to think about, though. <laughs> that was a weird that direction. That would be a good Jimmy Callow story, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> weird direction to go. <laughs> you never cease to amaze me. <laughs> All right. Um, any more public input on the house? Questions, comments? Questions, yeah. Anything? Is there, um, referring to Litchfield, Wall Street, um, is there any way to possibly look at this instead of taking a big bite out of the apple and do it in phases, just move it and let it sit someplace for a few years and then rehab it, something like that? It is a possibility. They've done that. Um, one situation I know like that is in Epsom, New Hampshire. Yeah. There was a lovely old church that was just too close to the road. And the town purchased the church, and they have moved it uh, behind the town hall. Yeah. And it's been sitting there uh, for a number of years, untouched but intact. And they, a few years ago, put a new roof on it so that they don't have any water questions. And it's just waiting for a restoration at some point. So that's been thought of and worked? Uh, yeah, I, I think that you know those were all possibilities that we'd have to hear from uh, the Conservation Commission, who would have land to put it on, uh, the selectmen, whether they felt that that was something that we should uh, so. endeavor. Um, but yes, that is, that's a distinct possibility to just move it, save it, and come back to it. I, uh, you, we're probably all familiar with the, the house, um, Craig Young's house up in the north end off Route 3A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a chance to talk to the owner today, and he said that he moved it just a little ways, and it was, I won't give the exact amount, but it was almost six figures 
to have it moved just mm -hmm. a short. It would be. It would be. Does that include the cost of the foundation? I don't think so. Okay. I think that was just the movie. So, you know, it's it's the tough. St I mean, I mean today with all the rules that you have with OSHA and so forth, it's not as simple as right. And uh, well, we got a guy right there that's got the experience of moving. That's you know that's one I, thing. I think it's expense. I mean, Rich, if we have the opportunity to purchase it for a dollar, I think it would be of interest to a lot of people in town to look into it. And there are companies, there's someone, I believe, in Merrimack that does it, and get a couple prices, and if it's out of our range, then we turn it down. We have a couple weeks to work on this, and mm -hmm. or a week. The maybe president of the uh, Merrimack Historical Society, John Lestoka, um, who's shortened name as we knew him as John Lester, are, are house movers. They, uh, he's retired now, but that's what his family did. And he could probably give us an idea of what might be involved in that. I mean, it would be worth at least... At least we try. Yeah, at least looking into yeah. and getting a price, and then we could say, I mean, we can all think it's going to be very, very expensive, but maybe we'd be surprised that it wouldn't be as much as we thought. Or, yeah, you know. and they move houses all the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not there, was, they there was a house in Litchfield that you commented on, Stephen. Lauren Jean's house. Yes, that was moved back from the road. Mm -hmm. Big house, just like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I had forgotten about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. That. yeah. Turned around and moved to the back of the lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was about what twenty twenty five years ago. Oh, more than that, at least. Yeah. More than that. I want more to than that. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. Forty, maybe. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we'd have to figure out a suitable place to put it, you know. Correct. Right, yeah, we, Correct. we need a plan. Yeah. Right. Coming up with a plan by the 30th, I don't know, we're going to have to really yeah. look at that. Is there any state funding that would fund a project like this at all? Well, there is, the state has a project called uh, Seven to Save. And that is, uh, they publish a list of seven properties in the state that are in uh, danger of disappearing. And they get accepted uh, into this program, and then they raise funds and work with the community and so forth to save these things. But we're, we don't have the luxury of the time necessary to do something like that um, because they don't select their seven to save until August or so. Um, but probably there is funding um, for that sort of thing. Yeah, we have. I mean, the house is significant uh, be architecturally because of you know the the age of it and the style of it and the and that it was a well built and you know uh, built by an affluent person and everything and also has historical significance. Right being that Captain B Bixby was in the Revolutionary War. So, I mean, it's important yeah. historically and architecturally. So, uh, and of course, that makes it cultural yeah, important. Yeah. So, and really until- Kind of hits all three uh, of our- of our All the check boxes. Yeah, yeah boxes. Mm -hmm. I was last in the house uh, sometime in the 1980s, late 80s. And at that point, it was still in splendid condition, but it was being used as a residence for the farm manager. Um, and Bob Roy was living there at the time. And he and his wife loved old houses and were taking nice care of it. And um, I'm sure other farm managers lived there, but then it sort of started falling apart. Not much attention was being paid to it. And, um, you know, it doesn't look anything at all now like it did 25 years ago. All right. Um, any any other comments from anyone? Or well, I, I guess I okay. This is kind of close for me um, because we saw our family home torn down the same way. And By the Wilson family. By the same people. Well, yes, but that, that's beside the point. <laughs> um, and we, we sold the property. We really didn't think that was going to be the end result. Um, but. Ultimately, yes, it's, it's their decision. They own it. Right. Mm -hmm. But does it hurt? Oh, yeah. 
Right? You hate to see these things happen. And you know, we are losing houses in this little town at an incredible rate. There are not that many early houses to begin with. Right. But I know that my dad is not a really good property maintenance kind of guy. So I think it probably was going to require a lot of their resources to, right. to turn it around. So yep. I think that was probably part of the decision. But still, um, sad to see it go. It is. It. Here. Every, yes. every time it happens, it's one more historic house that's gone. Every time I drive by the vacant lot. I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. And the same thing down to Danforth two years ago yeah. at the south end of town, that being demolished. Uh, I can remember watching the Danforth ladies walk across the street carrying buckets of water. <laughs> well, and picking their blackberries across the street. Yeah. Yeah. Tending their chickens in the yard. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'm, 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 I'm sorry for your loss, and I would understand if Century Farm were demolished, I would feel the same way. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I believe Bertha Campbell's house, even when you know when that was standing, had a tunnel to the river for the uh, the railroad. Uh, you know. Well, that was another that was another case of a house that burned that could be restored. It could have been saved. It burned up the center staircase, and my father bought the contents of the house. And they were in splendid condition. I said, well, I thought the house burned. He said, well, it only burned up the center staircase. It could have easily been restored. But the Campbells wanted to sell that property. And they didn't want to sell it as long as their old family house was still standing on the property. So they allowed it to be burned down after the fire. Hmm. Well, it's been a series of old houses that have gone. Yeah. And lovely old houses, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to say that this house, the Bixby house, is probably the gem, you know. Uh, In its day, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So, uh, moving forward, um, make a presentation to the uh, Board of Selectmen and see what we can do. I think that is our obligation since okay. we uh, have I, I move had that, that off. we um, try to get an appointment with the Board of Selectmen and bring forth um, what's been suggested by the owner and what our suggestions are and try to get the Conservation Commission involved and at least explore our op explore the possibilities that we have for yeah. something other than yeah. demolition. That's, okay. I'm, I'll move that. I second that. Okay. Any discussion? Amongst us? No. 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 Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? All right. That's uh, that's what we'll do then. And in the meantime, um, if we could talk with Andy Perlman and see if possibly, as far as well, what are the possibilities as far as salvage goes? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And if somebody wants to take it upon themselves to talk with the house mover, you know, because uh, we're, we're in a crunch here, you right. know. Yeah. Uh, Would it be possible to get on the agenda for tomorrow? I don't know. I you can't do that. Talk with Kim, but uh, the, the town, oh, okay. town manager, town administrator, and uh, not this Kim. This is yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I'm yeah, sorry. I didn't even see you yeah. back Kim there. Kim Kleiner, yes. Uh, I don't know. Is it possible? Um, so there, there is an item on the agenda that's um, very close to this. Um, so I don't think it would be a violation um, in any way. Um, I would note that I think you're you're under a, a very important um, timeline here, yes. right? So mm -hmm. um, if we if we take this in pieces, so there's no funds, no town funds in the budget that would fund uh, a 
expense of this type. Um, so then let's look at what norm is normally done. So what is normally done when you need to raise and appropriate funds outside of the operating budget is to put an article on the town warrant. Um, the warrant was finalized today. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, it has to post by law on Monday. Um, so that really takes that off of the table. Mm. So I think that's going to be a, a, a big hurdle okay. to overcome. Um, and so we have to look at other alternatives. And, and I'm not sure there's a whole lot out there. I think we have to really be creative. Um, but if you wanted to discuss it, we will, I can go now um, and make a, a quick change, get it toasted, get it sent out. Um, would you be willing to come with, without knowing that the conservation is? Yeah. Just bring it, bring it to their attention. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be a long conversation, I wouldn't think. Just say, hey, listen, this is what this is what came from our meeting last night. This is what's said in the letter. You know, so that's what I would envision saying. I mean, we're just really an advisory kind of a commission. And so, uh, you know, our job is to raise awareness and to follow the protocol to, to follow the right steps. But I think at this point, we, since an offer has been made, we need to bring it to the selectmen because that would be up to them to you know, select board to make any to kind of decision. So it's kind of like our next step really would be to, to bring it to them. And that's always better than hearing, why didn't somebody tell us this, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, um, I'll get it changed. OK. okay. Um, so they meet at 6.30. They have a very, Tight. very busy agenda. OK. <laughs> so talk know? fast. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a public hearing on accepting some funds, so it would be up Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Okay. Um, so if there's nothing further, uh, motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. So moved. Okay. Second. I'll second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Oh, I didn't get to use the Stephen. I didn't get to use the Yes. Well, you can now. <laughs> <laughs>